Welcome to part 4 of 5 for the series on the SOAR EDR project. If you haven't seen the previous parts where we go over how to build out a workflow for this project, set up Lima Charlie and create our detection rule, I highly recommend you go and watch that first. Today our objective is to set up both Slack and Tynes and then test our connection between Lima Charlie and Tynes to make sure that our SOAR is seeing the detection generated by Lima Charlie. Let's get started. To begin, you want to head over to slack.com and then click on the get started free button and then go ahead and create an account. Do make sure that you use a valid email account because they will be sending you a confirmation code. And then once you enter that in, go ahead and select create a workspace. So for the workspace name, I'll call it as my DFIR dash soar dash EDR. Click on next. And my name is indeed demo. I'll go ahead and skip this step and yeah, skip without inviting. What's your team working on right now? The best project <laughs> next and start with free. And now we're set up with Slack. There is one thing I want to do though, is add a new channel. So I'll click add channels, create a new channel and I'll call this as alerts and I'll put this as public. Add people. No, I do not want to. So I'll skip that. And on our left hand side, we have a new channel called alerts. So what this will do is that when we receive a detection from Lima Charlie on Tynes, Tynes will then send a message over to Slack specifically within the alerts channel. Because as a SOC analyst, you would probably want to have different channels and you'll want to have a dedicated channel for your alerts. So that is why we created an alerts channel. So now let's head over to tines.com and click on sign up. Now from the sign up, it does say work email, or you can sign up with Google or Microsoft, but just like Slack, do make sure you have a valid email account because they will send you a confirmation email. Once you sign in, you'll see the screen right here. Now we can go ahead and begin with an example, but I'll go ahead and select the X to exit out. I'll click on end tour. If we take a look on the left hand side, these are some of the actions that we can use to build our story, AKA playbook. So for example, we can use a webhook. We can use an HTTP request. All we need to do is just drag it into the storyboard. I'll delete that, delete that and delete that. There's also some templates. So we can click on template and these are just pre-built templates to use. So for example, we have virus total. I can drag that over. And then when I select it over on the right hand side, we have some options here, create a collection. There's probably a hash lookup as well. So I type in hash, get file behavior. We see a search for file hash and virus total. So if I click on that, there's a value entry for the file hash, but we don't need this right now. I'll go ahead and delete that. And there's also story libraries. So if you want to start with a template, we can do that as well. For example, if we wanted to add a domain to a block list in Zscaler, we can go ahead and click on that. And here's our pre-built story. We just simply have to import it and it will be imported into our playbook or story. So that's very helpful. There's also tools. So a page group and note. And then if you want to head over to the dashboard, we can click on the tines icon on the top left corner. So let's go ahead and click on that. And what I'm going to do is actually click on my name and select dark mode, because this is just a lot easier for me on my eyes. Now that I changed it to dark mode, let's go back to our story here. What we need to do is establish the link between Lima Charlie and Tynes. So that way we can know that Tynes is retrieving the detection. How do we do that? Let's go ahead and click on the simple weather app and I'll go ahead and delete that. The send email, I'll just delete that as well. Start from scratch. And what I'll be using is a webhook. So let's go ahead and grab that. And I'll name the webhook action as retrieve detections. The description, I'll just say retrieves Lima Charlie detections. For the webhook URL, I'll go ahead and just copy that. And now let's head over to Lima Charlie. So I'll select my organization. And where we want to go is outputs. I'll click on add output. And we got a couple of options here. We have the events, detections, deployments, audit logs, artifacts, and tailored. What we're interested in the most is detections. 
So this is a stream of detections reported by the rule engine. That's what we want. So I'll click on select. And now we have our destination. So Amazon S3, Kafka, Azure. There's Datadog, Elastic. So I'll go ahead and select Tind. Now let's say we didn't have a Tind. We can also just select Webhook as well. But since we do have an application for Tind, let's just select that. For the name, let's put in my defer dash soar dash EDR. The destination host, let's paste in the webhook, save output. That's it. We got our configuration saved, but we couldn't detect any recent samples moving through this output. I'll hit refresh, refresh, and there's still nothing. So what that means is that we just need to regenerate our event. So over on our server, I'll type in lasagna and hit enter. This should in theory generate our detection. So I clicked on refresh and here we go. We have our MyD for hack to a lasagna. And this looks to be pretty good. Let's head over to our tines and our retrieve detections. I'll just select events and I'll move this up just a bit. And let's take a look at our most recent detection, which is the first one here. So I'll expand that body. And look at that. That's pretty cool. We have our detection exactly one to one. So we have our title, which is my defer hack tool. And if we open up the detect event, we have the command line, the file path, the hash, and the username. That is pretty cool. Now we can start building our playbook to finally perform some automation. We should now have accounts for Slack. Tynes and Lima Charlie. And we also confirmed that the detection is showing up in Tynes, which means that we can begin creating our playbook and perform some automation. In the next part of our series, which will be the last episode, we'll begin creating our playbook by following our workflow that we created in part one. Do think about carving some time as it will be a longer video. And that is it. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you're enjoying this project series. If you are, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.